Big news. Um, these were out of stock for two years. But now they're Ish. back in stock with the Microbit V2.2. Small change to these. They're not like it's kind of updated. It's kind of not updated. They were exactly the same as the uh, original Microbit V2s. Um, but the chip that is used for the USB to um, serial and programming capability, like the um, L and LDAP chip, DAP chip, the whatever, uh, they changed the model because you know there's a chip shortage. So they found an alternative. Works exactly the same as before. So if you're looking for a Microbit V2, this is the one we have. It's the bare one, not the Go Kit. Uh, this is the only model we have in stock right now. Okay, next up. Um, we have, we've actually already stocked the RGBW version of these mega bright uh, NeoPixel compatibles um, with warm and cool white LEDs. And this is the one with the natural, like neutral white LEDs. It took us a little longer to get. Um, but if you want like a three watt LED version of a NeoPixel, on an aluminum PCB, uh, these will do the job. They work just like NeoPixels. You power them from five volts, but they just got like a massive ass LED on them. So uh, just, you can see you can chain them. Of course, it's one pixel per. Uh, comes with cables, of course, you can replace the cables and then you can see this like huge uh, LED chip in the middle with a WS2811 driver and then it's an aluminum backed PCB for heat sinking. Oh, and All then, right. sorry, there's there a heat sink, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, next up. Next up, ah, oh, this is fun. This is a curb cut 64 by 64 LED matrix. It's a hub 75 matrix, just like you'd expect, but it's got a trick on the back. It doesn't have like a flat corner side. It's not meant to go um, next to other panels on a wall. It's actually great for making corners and it's curb cut on all four sides so that you can make it into like cubes and other shapes. Otherwise, it's uh, identical to a hub, other Hub 75, uh, 64 by 64 LED matrices, comes with the power cable, comes with the two by eight IDC cable. Um, it's only, the only difference is the plastic. It's 2.5 millimeter pitch. Uh, this is showing, you know, three together, um, making a corner. So this would be great for making cubes um, or other shapes that, you know, you, you don't want to have to remove the plastic. It, like this is not even, this is just held together with tape too. I mean, you'll still want to have a mechanical structure behind it. Um, but, you know, if you want to make it easy to make um, cubic shapes or rectangles or whatever have you, um, these curb cut uh, panels are great and they'll, they'll line up quite nicely on the edges. You'll get a nice clean seam. Uh, next up from uh, Pimeroni, or Pimeroni, we have the Servo 2040. Um, this is a RP2040 based board that runs... Uh, C++ or uh, MicroPython and has some PIO code that is designed to run uh, up to 18 servos very cleanly. Um, so great for like hexapod or other robotic projects or uh, automatons where you want to drive a lot of servos very uh, cleanly. You provide five volt power externally, um, program it over USB. It's also got some RGB LEDs uh, and some sensor inputs for the analog input uh, ports. Um, it's fully assembled, got some QT port, I think two buttons, um, you know, big cap. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's basically designed specifically for servos or, you know, anything that takes a servo input. I, yeah, I guess you could also use it for driving other PWMable devices. Um, but I think this will be great for uh, roboticists who want to, um, you know, make uh, humanoid or, or arachnid-like robots. Okay, and then um, starting the Unexpected Maker Tour, here we go. Yes, we've got three uh, ESP32 S3 boards from Unexpected Maker. This is, I think, the Teeny Pico version, um, which I think has eight megabytes of flash and eight megabytes of PS RAM. Um, all of these start the, uh, US, uh, the USB native capable ESP32 S3, which is, uh, as we mentioned, a dual core ESP32 board. So it's got Wi-Fi, BLE, Two 10 silica cores running at 250 megahertz, uh, 240 megahertz, uh, 500k of uh, SRAM, and then of course external PS RAM. Um, got some extras on here, like um, you know a little NeoPixel in the corner there. I think a battery charger that you can uh, solder a battery onto. Um, lots of GPIO pins, uh, and it's pin compatible with with the Teeny S2. So if you have one of those. Uh, you can use this as well. So very powerful little Next chip. Next one. Here's the Feather S3 version. So it's got two STEM IQT ports uh, with power control, 
um, USB-C, uh, GPIO, it's Feather, uh, Featherwing compatible. Although do watch out, the pin numbers are not kind of the, what we like to use for our classic uh, Feather configuration. Uh, I think it's got 16 megs of flash and uh, eight megabytes of PS RAM. Although check the uh, specs for that. Got NeoPixel, two regulators, um, antenna and all that good stuff. Okay. And then uh, the next one. Yeah, and the last one is the Pro, which is uh, get castellated pads, a lot more pins. Um, it's got a battery port on the end if you do want a battery port. I think this also has 16 megs of flash and eight megs of PS RAM. Uh, it's got semi QT port and buttons. It looks like it's a little slimmer than the feather. It's like this. It's like the slimness of the teeny Pico, but like extended out. Uh, so it's got a ton more pins. Uh, looks like it's got a couple ground pads as well. So it's got like the most pads, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. All right. And then uh, you know they all come with these cards and they show all of the pins. Yes. You need and more. And, and they these run Circuit Python. And these, yeah, they're all running Circuit Python. I think there's also Micro Python support, and of course Arduino support's coming. Um, it's, it's in re release candidate mode. Um, these are the ones that have the um, updated Wi-Fi, so they're gonna have uh, you know, good Wi-Fi connection. There were a couple that, came, that went out earlier from um, other vendors that didn't have the Wi-Fi fix, but these do. So if you're wondering, uh, these have the Wi-Fi fix, so they're got, they've got solid uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Okay, and then the star of the show, besides Yuli Data, our team here at Adafruit and around the world, our community, our oh, customers. I want to show this, this cube. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And that's the cube. Yeah, we're the cube. Here, yeah. let me, uh, let's zoom in. Go go this way. You can see, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is just held on with, like, tape, I think. But um, you can see these curb cut LEDs are great. Very cool. All right, the start of the to, show to drink. this week is... Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, it's the um, WFL external antenna version of the Feather V2. Um, it's basically the exact same layout as the Feather ESP32 V2, but instead of the PCB antenna module, we're using the WFL antenna module. It's great is that it's got um, you know, CE and FCC certification, and you can attach an external antenna using the built-in WFL connector, which I will show. It's got USB-C, it's got an ESP32, it's got um, eight megs of flash, and I think two megs of PS RAM. Um, it's got uh, auto reset, it's got a reset button and a user button, it's got um, a STEM IQT connector with uh, power disabling, there's a NeoPixel, uh, battery charging, all the stuff that you love about the Feather ESP32 uh, V2, we upgraded this version. Um, pinout is, is nearly identical, um, but of course there's, there's just more memory, more flash, more everything. Um, and there's also more labeling because the module is smaller and we got to cram more stuff in because of that. I like the little Adafruit logo that pops it's, up. Yes, out. well, it's, a, I, you know, I kind of did that on purpose, I think. I, I like know. it. Uh, let's just say I did. Um, so I'll just show what's, what's going on here because it's a little, it's, you want to be close. So, like I said, it's the exact same version of the board as the Feather ESP32 um, V2, except normally this would be an antenna, but you see there's actually no, this module is just cut short. Usually there's a PCB antenna, but there's no PCB antenna. Instead, the, the PCB underneath is visible. And this is a WFL connector. So this can connect to um, an SMA adapter here, or uh, I can grab, this is a, um, from DigiKey, I just picked up a, uh, this is actually a BLE antenna, but you know, 2.4 megahertz will work fine for Wi-Fi. So why is this good? Let's say you want you know, a much better antenna than the PCB antenna. Um, you can do a directional antenna if you're putting it in an enclosure um, that will block the RF signal. You can um, you know, use this to have an external panel mount, but mostly it's for people who want um, a better antenna than the PCB antenna, which is, you know, it's a good antenna, it's not bad. But um, an external antenna will, will get you more gain, and of course you can have it farther away from your electronics, especially if, if the RF is a, you know, affecting um, your signals or something. It shouldn't, but you, know, you wanna have it far away, um, you can do that. One thing I will note, because I, even I got confused by this, it's not a UFL connector, it's a WFL connector. It's smaller than UFL. This is a, it's also called an MHF3, or an IPEX-3, it's kind of the third version of uh, what, you know, what UFL would be called version one. This is smaller than that. 
Um, so we'll be getting adapters, but for now in the um, product link for this product, um, I do link to a place you can get uh, you know, these SMA or RP SMA WFL adapters. And also on DigiKey, there's this antenna that I've tested and uh, works just fine. Even though it's advertised for BLE, it's still 2.4 megahertz um, and it's a fine antenna. So, um, you know, if you like the Feather ESP32 or ESP32 V2, but you want an external antenna, um, we now have one in an FCC CE module format um, with a WFL connector that's easy to plug an external antenna. Mr. Brothers.